All right, sixth graders, let's run through this listening stuff a little bit. I have the, um, the slideshow open up my computer. Of course, you probably can't see it very well, but you have that shared with you uh, through Classroom. So I'm just gonna run through each example uh, very quickly and talk a little bit about it. I think this will be helpful as we go along. I also noticed that uh, looking at my slideshow, I posted uh, in the wrong order the second clip, uh, which I don't really think matters. Uh, we're filling out six of them and however, it gets done, it doesn't really matter uh, whether we have, you know, um, one's a different order. So uh, not a huge issue. So anyway, we're gonna start out. So again, we're looking at 1900s here uh, for music and things get a little bit wild and crazy uh, as far as composition uh, is concerned. So we've got 20th century composers that wanted to push limits of musical creativity and they're going beyond tonality. They're not worried so much about, oh, is this in the key of E or is this in the key of G? They're just playing uh, really uh, anything, anything out of that 12 note chromatic scale. And they want to find new ways to organize different keys or new ways of organizing sound. Uh, they're looking at all the traditional stuff that's been in the orchestra for years and they're trying to really turn it on its head. <clears throat> uh, they're also looking for new sources of sound. So can you take something that's not really an instrument but make something musical from it? Um, so whether it's using uh, you'll see in one of the videos uh, from George Crumb, somebody's using a saw blade uh, to create music and somebody's singing through a tube. Uh, you have other people clicking rocks together. Uh, but you also have people taking traditional instruments like in the Banshee and using it as uh, something to get a whole different sound, whereas they're actually scraping the inside uh, of the piano, the strings on the inside. So uh, once again, so new untraditional instruments and then non-traditional ways to play your standard instruments. And then again, of course, new combinations. So not just the, tip, the typical uh, orchestra anymore. Uh, we listened, uh, I signed this last week. I know um, all my Tuesday sixth graders didn't have class uh, that week. Some of you guys uh, did the assignment anyway, which is great. Uh, but this week, uh, I expect all my Tuesday sixth graders to work on that first uh, Arnold Schoenberg piece. And this is called Variations for Orchestra. Uh, the link, even though I've been posting them up on Classroom, the link is embedded within the PowerPoint. Uh, so this guy, born in Vienna uh, and ended up moving over to California where he died. This guy, he came over to California or actually really just the United States, probably through New York uh, during, uh, um, basically before World War II really got up and going because uh, as we know uh, with uh, Nazi Germany and Hitler, the Holocaust was taking place and um, Schoenberg was a Jewish um, composer. So. And his first piece of atonal music, atonal meaning not having a specific key or tonal center, was in 1909. And he's uh, given sort of credit as inventing the 12-tone method. Um, and when you listen to his piece, it's very, very hard to kind of listen to. It's almost a little rough on your ears. Uh, it takes a long time to appreciate some of those things. Um, moving on here. Oh, yeah, and this is also the genre was 12-tone music. Um, I... I think I made a comment in the uh, classroom about that. So the next one, um, let's see here. I think it was Izzy who had the proper order, even though I mixed it up. Uh, George Crumb, Ancient Voices of Children. This is one of the strangest, I think. Um, definitely not something I'm uh, listening to in the car. Uh, obviously not. But uh, this is genre. You could either put avant-garde or you can just put experimental. I'll take either one. And what I want you to do is ignore the meter because there really isn't any specific meter set up. Uh, but try to pick out all the different instruments that you hear and see in the video and put those down in the orchestration. And then try to figure out kind of the, the texture. Are there are monophonic things happening or homophonic, or do you hear multiple melodies happening to create a, a polyphonic tone? So, <clears throat> George Crumb, American composer. Uh, let's see, won a Pulitzer in 68, born 1929. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't checked um, these guys within the last year or so, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as I know, uh, George Crumb is still alive. Uh, let's get past that one for now. Uh, Igor Stravinsky, uh, probably one of the most well-known composers of the 19th, or sorry, the 20th century, 1900s. Uh, his piece, Rite of Spring, caused kind of a near riot uh, at its opening. This was a ballet, so when you see it uh, being performed on the video, it's just the orchestra performing it, but this one was presented uh, in France as a ballet. So they had a lot of dancers doing very unusual, kind of unnatural things that people hadn't seen before. Um, the music was very um, dissonant and kind of unpredictable and it really 
pushed people the wrong way and uh, people were yeah pretty much standing up causing a, a bit of a near riot hollering and screaming and hissing and cat calls and boos and things were probably thrown around uh, at one point uh, backstage one of the stage managers had to flick the lights on and off a bunch of times to try to get everybody's attention or try to calm everybody um, but this piece um, while I listen to it now it really doesn't sound all that out there uh, it was back then uh, when the piece had toured around for a little while it actually came back into that same uh, orchestra house it came back into that same um, that ballet house I guess uh, it, it came back there I'm trying to think about how many years it was but uh, after it had toured around Europe for a little bit when it did come back it received a standing ovation so as people started getting used to it and their ears started hearing it a bit more uh, they really learned to love and appreciate it so uh, I'll probably send out a little short article about the Rite of Spring for you guys to read later. But I'm going to keep moving so this video is not too long. Uh, Henry Cowell doing the Banshee. Henry Cowell, um, let's see here, a 1897, he passed in 65. He invented the early drum machine. Um, so all of you guys that are into EDM, you can thank Henry Cowell. Uh, collected folk songs from around the world. He really compiled a lot of that stuff. That was one of his other uh, passions. Um, he was a cultural ambassador for the U.S. government and advanced the use of the tone cluster, being able to have all these notes together that aren't really creating a chord, but more of a cluster of sound. Uh, again, the link to that piece is embedded in uh, the uh, slideshow, and they're using the, tr the piano in a non-traditional way. So however you want to describe that in your orchestration, um, I'll let you do that. Okay, Steve Reich, uh, he's actually, um, he's still producing uh, and creating music. He's been around, so let's see, since 1936. Again, still presently performing and writing. Um, the piece that we listened to, Music for 18 Musicians, I believe was uh, composed in the 1970s. I'd have to double check. Uh, but actually, a, a piece I really enjoy, and I um, want you guys to spend a little bit of time watching that video. So when you are creating the... Um, the orchestration I want you to look at the video and and also use your ears and figure out what different instruments you're hearing and if you have any questions about any of them just shoot me an email um, the genre for this one is called minimalism okay and Philip Glass Philip Glass is probably one of the most well-known composers out of the group he does a lot of movie soundtracks so some of these guys because they are creating kind of outlandish music that's not really where they're gonna be making all their money composers have to live and eat just like we do and they have to make money and work regular jobs just like we do so um, Philip Glass has done a lot of uh, drama movies and he's even done uh, the Fantastic Four which came out I think what, maybe early to mid 2000s um, but Philip Glass very well known uh, again he also is uh, a big composer with minimalism now the genre for this one, Einstein on the Beach, is uh, gonna be called Abstract Opera. And I said that the George Crumb piece, Ancient Voices of Children, may have been the most odd one. This one probably is up there as well as just about the most odd. Uh, a very interesting video to watch. So when you are listening to it, try to think about what those sounds are that you are hearing and do your best with your texture. So remember texture, you have monophonic which is everything playing everybody playing the same melody you have homophonic a melody with some sort of supporting harmony and then you have polyphonic which are multiple melodies happening at the same time so um to sum it all up we've got these six examples i want you to do the best you can each week to put one of them together so right now as it stands we're remote teaching for three weeks it could be longer uh, so let's just be prepared for that if it does happen. Hopefully I'll see you guys in April. Um, but again, any questions, let me know. So I have office hours from 9 to 11 and then 1 to 3, but everything that you guys do goes right to my phone. So it may even be 9 at night and <laughs> you're working on something and you have a question and I'll probably respond. So um, do the best you can, okay? Thank you guys so much.